For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass Senate 982. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Senate 982, an act to increase intergovernmental coordination to identify and combat violent crime within Indian lands and of Indians. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon, and the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Armstrong, excuse me, North Dakota, Mr. Armstrong, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the bill under consideration. Without objection, so ordered. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. S-982, the Not Invisible Act of 2020, introduced by Nevada Senator Catherine Cortez Mesto and passed by the Senate last March, addresses the crisis of violence and sexual violence committed against American Indian and Alaska Native men and women in two concrete ways, by directing the appointment within the Bureau of Indian Affairs of a coordinator of federal efforts to combat violence against Native people, and by establishing a commission on reducing violent crime against Indians. I want to commend my colleague, Representative Deb Holland from New Mexico, for introducing the companion bill here in the House and for her efforts in advancing this important legislation. For decades, Native American and Alaska Native communities have struggled with high rates of assault, abduction, and murder of women. Community advocates describe the crisis as a, as a legacy of generations of government policies promoting forced removal, land seizures, and violence inflicted on Native peoples. Advocates and victims' families also complain, and rightly so, that the investigation and monitoring of disappearances and killings of members of their communities have gotten lost in bureaucratic gaps generated by a system that lacks clarity on whether local or federal agencies should investigate. The federal government must do something to address these problems. The statistics on violence in Native American communities are staggering. More than four in five American Indian and Alaska Native women have experienced violence in their lifetime, including 56.1% who've experienced sexual violence. American Indian and Alaska Native men also have high victimization rates, with 81.6% having experienced violence in their lifetime. This problem is, in large part, the result of decades of neglect by the federal government. This crisis has particularly affected Native American women, scores of whom have gone missing and have been found murdered. Recently, these women's stories have begun to be told to a wider audience, but these stories are not new, and it's long overdue that we address them. The Not Invisible Act of 2020 is an important step for the federal government in finding an adequate response to the problem of violence against Native Americans. By making a permanent position within the Bureau of Indian Affairs that reports directly to the Secretary of the Interior and who will submit an annual report to Congress, we will greatly improve the federal response to combating violence in Native communities. Significantly, this bill also directs the BIA coordinator to take into consideration the unique challenges faced by Native American communities, both on and off tribal lands, and to work in cooperation with outside organizations to train tribal law enforcement, Indian Health Service care providers, and other tribal community members on identifying, responding to, and reporting on cases of missing persons, murder, and human trafficking. And for two years, a joint commission on reducing violent crimes against Indians will be tasked with preparing recommendations on concrete actions the Department of the Interior and the Department of Justice can take to help combat violent crimes against Native Americans and on Native American lands. These include the development and implementation of strategies for identifying, reporting, and responding to instances of missing persons, murder, and human trafficking, tracking and reporting relevant data, and increasing prosecutions in this neglected arena. These are long overdue critical measures. It's well past the time to help rectify these problems, and I'm pleased that the Not Invisible Act will go a long way in that process. Therefore, I urge all of my colleagues to join me in support of this bill today. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from Pennsylvania reserves. The gentleman from North Dakota is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized.
I rise in support of S-982, the Not Invisible Act of 2019. We just discussed the appalling extent of missing and murdered Indigenous women and how Savannah's Act will begin to address this issue. The Not Invisible Act is another step to solve this abhorrent problem. This bill provides an opportunity for the federal government to improve its efforts to combat the, the growing crisis of murder, trafficking, and the disappearance of Indigenous men and women. While there are many federal programs tasked with addressing violent crime, the agencies that operate these programs do not have an overarching strategy to properly deploy these resources in Indian country and in urban Indian communities. Program implementation often takes place without considering the unique needs of Native, Native American communities in this context. S-982 will require that the appropriate agencies to coordinate prevention efforts, grants, and programs across the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Department of Justice, among other stakeholders. I urge my colleagues to join, in support, join me in supporting S-982, and with that, I yield back. North Dakota yields, uh, uh, reserves or yields? Reserves. Reserves. The gentlewoman from uh, Pennsylvania uh, is recognized. Um, Mr. Speaker, may I inquire if there are additional speakers? Then I would reserve. The gentleman from North Dakota. Mr. Speaker, I yield 10 minutes to my good friend from Washington, Mr. Newhouse. The gentleman from North Dakota yields to uh, the gentleman from Washington State uh, 10 minutes. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my friend from North Dakota, Mr. Armstrong, for letting me speak on this important issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to rise today to urge my colleagues to support a bipartisan piece of legislation that will finally foster progress toward addressing the crisis that we know is plaguing our Native communities across the country. Des despite unparalleled rates of violence, there is still no reliable way of knowing how many Indigenous women go missing each year, nor whose fate hangs in the balance of an unsolved murder case. My congressional district in central Washington Central Washington has been particularly affected by this crisis. Since the year 2013, there have been 13 cases of missing or murdered indigenous women on or around the Yakima Reservation alone. This number only accounts for the, the land surrounding one of the 29 federally recognized tribes in Washington state, let alone the hundreds of others across the country. And this information is only available due to the efforts and activism of local communities. Tribal and community leaders have held multiple marches and vigils and community forums to raise awareness and demand action. The di diligent reporting of the Yakima Herald Republic, our local newspaper, has highlighted the response and activism on the ground by creating an online hub to list open cases involving missing and murdered women and providing resources for the community to report such disappearances. And recently, the state of Washington passed laws in Olympia that have enhanced data collection and improved communication between tribal leaders, law enforcement, and various state agencies. These local leaders have given a voice to the crisis, and I'm heartened to see that the federal government is finally taking action. For too long, indigenous women, native communities have faced this crisis all alone and suffered in silence. The Trump administration has worked to bring this crisis to light, creating an interagency task force between the departments of justice and interior called Operation Lady Justice. I was proud to welcome Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs, Tara Sweeney, to Central Washington last December, where she highlighted the administration's effort to deliver justice to Native American communities. But Secretary Sweeney echoed the concerns of local leaders and myself by pointing out the need for congressional action. By sending this bill to President Trump's desk, we are signaling that we have heard them and that they are no longer invisible. As Congress takes long overdue action, to address the crisis of missing and murdered indigenous women. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting the Not Invisible Act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Washington yields. The gentleman from North Dakota reserves.
Uh, you, you know, Mr. Speaker, uh, I don't think I could close any better than that, so I'll yield back. The gentleman from North Dakota yields back the balance of his time. The gentlewoman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Okay. Mr. Speaker, the Not Invisible Act does precisely what its entitled aims to do. It ensures that the federal government dedicate proper attention and gives visibility to the crisis of violence and sexual violence committed against American Indian and Alaska Native men and women. Indeed, these communities have been subjected to invisibility and neglect for far too long. I urge my colleagues to support this important bipartisan legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from Pennsylvania yields back the balance of her time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate Bill 982? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. <laughs>